Hello, everyone. Hope you're all doing well. At least, uh, you know, I might not be the best streamer in the world, but I am consistent. And that's got to be worth something, right? Uh, I'll get the game going here in a second. I just got to gotta click it and whatnot. But um, <laughs> normally I have the game ready to go when I when I start in. But today when I opened up Twitch to like set the tags and those things and whatnot, I looked over at the chat before I could pop it out and and was greeted by Ren. Ren Chan waving her finger at me. <laughs> so it's fine. Don't worry about it. Also, I hope everyone had a good weekend. Mine was uh relatively relaxing and decent. Um I ate at a cafe. I heard someone's freaking disturbing life story that they were telling their friend about. I really wanted to read my book and I got maybe, oh, I don't know. How far did I get? Um, let's see, this is page 196. I got maybe well, I, I got a little bit further. Y yeah, I got maybe 16 pages through in like the course of an hour. And it's not because the subject matter is difficult. It's because there was this couple, like two friends behind me, and they are talking the whole time, and I couldn't not listen. Like, I don't know if that ever happens to you when you're out in public somewhere, maybe on the bus, a cafe just walking behind a group of people on the sidewalk or something and there's really nothing you'd rather be doing but not being around them but they they're just there and they keep talking and you have to hear all about their life it's awful anyway um today let's put aside my weekend troubles um and yeah let, let's let's enjoy let's enjoy some Edgeworth. So I've kind of forgotten where we were. Wait, no, that's not right. Is it? Oh, I got to the first trial. Okay, that it's kind of coming back. We got to the first trial. We finished our investigation as Edgy Lad. Oh my, Mr. Loris feels that way about me? Apparently. He isn't aware of your real secret at all. This is no time to be embarrassed. I'm sorry. I'm just hardly accustomed to that sort of thing. Worry not. And in any case, whatever it was that he saw on the night of the incident, mark my words, I will drag it out of him. Does that mean Mr. Loris is the witness today? No. I believe that none will be the first to take the stand. Sister Bikini. She claims to have seen the very instant in which you carried out the crime. I just want to ask you one last time. It really wasn't you who killed Miss Elise Dunham, correct? That is correct. It wasn't me. Very well then. M Mr. Edgeworth? Yes. You are a prosecutor, aren't you? Are you sure about this? If your true identity is revealed... Don't worry. I've made the necessary arrangements. Uh, I see. Iris. It is a prosecutor's job to doubt people. But right now, I'm a defense attorney. A defense attorney's job is to believe in people, and to believe until the bitter end. That's what my friend told me once. Mr. Edgeworth. I simply ask that you watch and decide for yourself whether or not I am fit to do the tasks I have been entrusted. Very well, sir. I leave my defense in your capable hands. Cool. So I'm allowed to like this character, right? Because she's not Dahlia, it seems. But we'll see. 
Court is now in session for the trial of Sister Iris of Hazakura Temple. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Oh, look, there it is. He's got the little badge. It's <laughs> good. Also, sorry for, like, interrupting the game again um, with my random thoughts and those things. But, like, oh, it is Monday. It is, it is a Monday. <laughs> I had to wake up early today uh, in order to work. Hello, hello, Yen. Do you like the new better Twitch TV emotes? I added quite a few. Oh, it's Monday and uh, I had to rotate a bunch of API keys this morning with another team. So I had to start my day at 8 a.m. Or rather be on a meeting by 8 a.m. And uh, I didn't sleep very well last night. Like, I think I went to bed sometime around 12.30, maybe. And I woke up at like 5.11 or something like that, I think was the time when I looked. And then, to top it off, I was starting an hour early and not getting tons of sleep. Uh, my boss also had a meeting with myself and the other team leads until 5.15. So I had to stay an extra 15 minutes longer today. And then to top it off, as I was finishing my work day, like finished typing a couple of things and it's like, all right, time to close the laptop. I look at my sidebar where all like the DMs are and everything like that in Slack. And I just see the three dots going on one of my, uh, my newer hires poised and ready to ask me a question. And I was like, oh, and I closed my laptop, got up, went over to the to the microwave like put my piece in looked back at my laptop turned the microwave on went back over opened it up I'm like i'm gonna be a good boss be a good boss and then helped him for like the next 15 or so minutes to to get him unblocked he's on a he's on a different time zone so like for him he still has like three or something hours left in the workday. so if i hadn't unblocked him it would just you know wouldn't have been able to do anything but anyway, that was that was that. That said, um, despite the tiredness and everything like that, and, and all that business, um, brain rot. Uh, oh, the pizza was really good. <laughs> the, the microwave and the pizza. I actually have a picture of it. It's uh, it's not Domino's. I know, surprising, very surprising. I know. Um, but it's uh, it's a local place that does some some really interesting pizzas. I think this one was called like something something potato, and it had olive oil, garlic, cheddar, and mozzarella cheese, uh, spinach, not that much though, red onions, red onions, shredded potatoes, bacon, rosemary and feta cheese. Which, like, uh, this is kind of a terrible picture. There's also blue cheese and some chicken tenders on the side here. But, um, yeah, that that's the interesting pizza. It's good, honestly. But, yeah, so I have that. And that was, uh, that was my dinner. Also, I, I have a cooking question for later, but... Is that beer cheese? No, it's a uh, feta cheese. Pretty sure it's only feta that's that's on it. Feta cheese. This. Oh wait, you're talking about this like goo over here? That's blue cheese. Blue cheese to go with the chicken. Get out of here! What do you mean? I love blue cheese. Look at it. Blue. <laughs> I get blue cheese every time. When it's like ranch or blue cheese, it's like no. Give, give me give me blue cheese. I wanna eat mold. Delicious mold. <laughs> no, not a fan. Alright. The defense does indeed appear to be ready. However, the same cannot be said for the prosecution in this case. Indeed. What if Ed can you imagine if Edgeworth just like popped up on the other side? It was like the prosecution ready and just like played both sides back and forth. 
Like, how long do you think it would be <laughs> before the judge noticed? Because given, like, the state of the judges in this courtroom, I feel like they wouldn't realize as long as he took off the defense attorney pin every time. Not sure I like such a blatant waste of this court's time. An empty prosecutor's chair could only mean that the prosecutor has no confidence in their ability to prove their case. It would seem this case is already over before a chance to begin. Wait, is that how that works? I'm ready to announce my verdict at this time. This court finds the defendant. <gasps> it is Francisca. Hell yeah. The prosecution stands ready. And you are? Francisca von Karma, prosecuting prodigy. Eula? Von, von Karma, you say? Perchance, you wouldn't be of any relation to the legendary prosecutor, Banford von Karma. You know what she reminds me of? So you say Eula. I think Vandred. Specifically, the really cute girl from Vandred that I had like a crush on when I first watched it. Um, let me find an image that isn't WebP. Because why wouldn't Google Images have anything that isn't a WebP? Okay, th this is not the best one, but... Here it is. You can see she's got the shoulder pads and the hair, I might say. Um, where'd, where'd it go? There, there was just, here we go. See, like, see? Let me see if I can blow this one up a little bit. Oh, that's, that's a YouTube thumbnail? Very nice. Anyway, she reminds me of uh, the turquoise-haired lady from Vandred. Oh, here we go. Especially this picture. Come on, let me open up this one. This one's really good for it. World's smallest picture. Okay, that's... that's fine. God, it's WebP! Every goddamn time is WebP. <sighs> oh, I used to have this... I just found a, a picture that I used to have as a background as like a 12 year old or whatever I was. Here she is. See, she she reminds me of uh, Von Karma. Maybe not like, she's normally not this uh, demure. I don't, I don't know how she would describe her. But like, I don't know. It's the shoulder pads really that, that make me think of her. The hair's not quite right, but... Anyway. Moving right along. Legends are a thing of the past. I'm a Von Karma, that is all. Upon a special request, I flew in today for the purposes of prosecuting this case. You... you did? Then you must... you must be quite a big shot, eh? By the way, Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. I'm almost certain that I've seen you somewhere before, or by just imagining things. You look very much like a prosecutor I met once. I believe you are imagining things, Your Honor. Miss Von Karma, do you have anything to say? There is no such weakling as this man among those of the prosecutor's office. <laughs> Harsh. <laughs> there, there isn't. But I'm sure, once before in this courtroom, bro. I told you, there is no such weakling. What is that? A whip? I'm not sure I care for such a thing in my courtroom. Only in my bedroom. Bailiff, remove that whip and... I have no objection to the whip. Y you don't. The prosecution can wield a whip or drink 17 cups of coffee. But there is still only one truth. That is what I stand here to prove today. This promises to be interesting, Miles Edgeworth. I'd expected to face Phoenix right here today. But looking at you now, maybe this is what I have been waiting for all this time. Miles Edgeworth, I will not allow this chance to crush you slip through my fingers. 
I see you brought your flair for the histrionic. Oh god. Oh. Oh. The gauntlet thrown down. There we go. Allow me to add to the things I'm not sure about. People acting bizarrely in my court. Blech. The stage is set. Now continue with the proceedings, Your Honor. Hello, Tech Robo. How's it going? Thank you for the bits and welcome to the stream. Uh, did I read this already? The stage is set. Now continue with the proceedings, Your Honor. Very well, Miss Honkama. Please give an outline of this case. With as little whipping as possible. Wait, how come they're not having Gumshoe do it? The murder victim is the famed picture book author, Miss Elise Duenum. What way to go? Right in the spine. Actually, is that a better way to go than others? How, um, how, like, how much of your spine do you have to have messed up before you, like, are totally paral like, paralyzed and can't feel? Is it, like, would she just not be able to feel from, like, her waist down in this case? Her body was found. Sorry, that's fun karma saying it, not the joint. Her body was found in the Hazakura Temple courtyard. She had been stabbed through the torso by a ceremonial sword from a golden statue. The sword in this picture is the weapon in question, correct? Very well. The court accepts this photo of the crime scene. There is no mistake. This was the doing of Sister Iris. After all, there is a witness to her crime. Very well. Please bring this witness to the stand. And so it begins. My first and last trial as a defense attorney. Do your dad proud, Ma- <laughs> Get her a box? <laughs> Get her a box? I didn't realize she was that short. Witness? State your name and occupation, please. Oh shoot, you know what I just realized? Um... Like, a few months ago, I threw out a bunch of clothes, which included, um... Oh, wait a minute. Did I throw it out? But anyway, it included a bunch of, like, old Halloween costumes and other things that I wasn't going to use, which inc pretty sure included a Catwoman costume that I had one time, which included a whip. Ah, if I hadn't thrown it out, I could just, like, hold the whip and, like, whatnot when I when I do find its cover. Hold on here. I'm not sure about, about being not sure if I care for this at all. What? Witness, please stand up nice and straight. <laughs> if I recall correctly, there are a few milk crates in the defendant's lobby for our back pain plagued witness. Our back pain plagued witness. Bailiff, fetch a crate for this poor lady, please. The poor thing. Hold on, one one second. I want to check something real quick. <laughs> Checking my closet to see if uh, if I had remembered wrong and I had actually kept the whip. But uh, the answer is no. I did not keep the whip. So sorry, can't do a good von Karma impression. Little old me. Well, I'm the head nun of Hazakura Temple on Eagle Mountain. I don't remember the voice that I gave her before. My name is Bikini. You got it? Bikini! Nice to meet everyone. <laughs> oh, this guy's face. I don't know where I put that picture of, uh... <laughs> who ahead of him just zoomed in. But you don't appear to be wearing a bikini right now. 
The courtroom is the garden of holy judgment. Those with lechery in their hearts should leave the sanctuary at once. Okay. You want me to leave? No need to get your bikinis in the twist. Let me tell you, I'm a sight to behold in the summer. <laughs> in any case. <laughs> this is very true. Dude, Francisca is like the ultimate anti-Dahlia. Witness, I hear that you saw the crime take place on the night in question. That's right! I can still hardly believe it myself, to be honest. There's no way dear little Iris could do anything like that. Let us hear what you have to say then. First, tell us about your own movements that night, eh? They really put that in there, huh? They really did it. Are there any other, um, like, Canadianisms besides a boot and a that, uh, that one should attempt to incorporate into the judge's speech? I've watched Letter Kenny, like, seven seasons of it or something like that. Maybe eight. I don't know. I think I'm up to date. I could be wrong. Double double? Double double? What is Letter Kenny? Oh, it's a it's a comedy show on Kulu. It's uh it's made by and written by Canadians and stars a lot of Canadian actors about people living in Canada. It's it's actually really good. Like the humor is pretty dry, but but fun. Oh right, the donut hole thing. Right. I forgot about that. That night, I was hoping an alkalit with her training in the inner temple, but, huh, as you can see, my back likes to act up violently. So, I left Iris to help the alkalit and returned to Hazakura Temple. There's no bath in the inner temple, you see, and I need a long, hot soak. It was after I'd finished, just after, just as I was heading back. That's what I thought. Hmm. Dude, this guy's eyes. Where's that, um, where's that eye chart thing? You know, the, uh, the psychopath eyes? Y you know what I'm talking about? I swear to God, if this is a WebP, I'm going to be so mad. I'm still mad. It's a fucking J. It's a JFIF. Goddamn Twitter. There we go. All right. Let's see here. Uh, stress in life somewhere. Mm, no, I don't think so. A lot of pressure. Beware of your situation. These eyes want to be want to unload. No. Nope. Be very cautious. Extreme pressure. These eyes are hiding something. No. Don't walk. Run away. These eyes have psychotic tendencies. No. The eyes of a psychopathic killer. These eyes want to gain power over you. Oh, uh, I think we got a match. I, I think we got a match. I think that the judge might be a psychopath. Hold on. Let me, uh, let me just, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. Hmm. So it was simply a coincidence that you found yourself returning to Hazakuro Temple. <laughs> yes, you could say that. Yes, you could say that. If my back hadn't been in so much pain, I would have stayed at the Ender Temple. That sounds like a pretty important statement she just made. There's only one problem with this testimony that I can see. And you're not about to fall at the first hurdle. Now are you, Miles Edgeworth? Mr. Edgeworth, please begin your cross-examination. <laughs> Alright, Edgeworth is first time. Edge's first time is with Bikini. His first time cross-examining a witness. Let's, uh, let's press her a bit. What is this inner temple? Well, let's see, conversing with the spirits is what we train people to do, right? 
will be the ones asking you the questions, madame. <laughs> In order to do that, a place, a, a place strong in spiritual power is required. There's a small temple across Dusky Bridge called the Inner Temple. Alkalitz must spend an entire night there to undergo tra intense training. And how exactly do you help with this process? It is all quite exacting. It can't be performed without a nun supervising. Like a tutor, watching to make sure a spoiled child studies. A tutor with a whip, in your case. If that is the case, then why did you return to Hazakuro Temple, where the murder took place? Oh, as you can see, my back like sacked up violently. Violently? That's right. It's no laughing matter, especially in winter. I can't hold anything heavier than a knife and fork during the cold months. Just being alive is like strict training. <laughs> On the night of the murder, was this fabulous back of yours hurting again? Th that's right. Raging like a bull in a pig pen. I almost fainted once or twice. I just knew that unless I warmed it up, it was finally going to finish me off. So, I left Iris to help the alkalite and returned to Hazakura Temple. You left Iris to help? With what? What do you think? The alkalite's training, of course. It was just past 10pm, so we were starting to enter the training exercise proper. Aha! We have her. We know that Iris never went there. Wasn't it your place to remain with the disciple? Well... <laughs> The job is to simply watch over the outlet so that they don't pass away. Just to confirm this point again, that night, you met Iris in the inner temple, correct? Yes, yes, she's a gentle, honest girl. She's never once failed to follow my directions. There's no bath at the inner temple, you see, and I need a long, hot soak. So you return to the Hazakura temple in order to take a bath. My back is to blame for everything. It's a do-or-be-done-in kind of world, after all. How long were you in the bath for, if you don't mind me asking? My, 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 what a filthy little rogue you are. I know what's on your mind. <laughs> the face of innocence right here. He's just, like, so deadpan. I bet your next question is going to be, where exactly did you wash? Ooh. Under the bikini folds, obviously. Uh, this is why you have to watch the young one. <laughs> what are you going on about? I was so uh, pathetic, Miles Edgeworth. The lowest of the low. Mm. <laughs> is there some sort of kick me sign stuck to the defenses bench? Anyway, I couldn't afford to be away from my post for too long. You understand, so... It was after I'd finally finished. Just as I was heading back, that's when I saw it. Right? It's a... This is a good, like... Educational moment for Edgeworth to learn how it feels to be the punchy bag of the room. Hold it! Hold it. The crime took place in the courtyard... I don't know why this is occurring. It was probably the voice. What if... What if they ever adapted Ace Attorney into a live action? I know there's an anime, by the way. Which, if you didn't know, there's an anime, by the way. Uh, I'm not watching it yet because I know that I have to finish this first. They did? Okay, but there's... Wait, wait what do you mean there's a musical? What, what do you mean there's a musical? Ace Attorney Musical. Good God. Well, this looks like a YouTuber thing. Turnabout in Ace Attorney Musical. The, are you... Well, hold on. I have two things here in front of my face. I have... Phoenix write the musical supercut, the turnabout encounter, with uh, some very interesting costumes. But then there's also this, which looks... I don't know why, but this looks like a, a lot... Uh, 
a, a lot more. Oh, wait, do they just sing it? Oh, oh god, make it stop. That's that's like a Tumblr post. Gucket and Sivan, the truth reborn. Wow. Good. I like her hair. Hold on, dude. Is there a higher version of this image right here? God damn it! It's a it's a web P. Every freaking time. Look at this hair, though. What's wrong with web P's? I can't display them. That that's the problem. Is that uh. OBS doesn't display them, pretty sure. Oh wait, it does! Sorry. It does display them. I could have sworn it didn't. They must have updated it at some point. Anyway, good hair. Good, good hair. Is she also the one in the live action? No even better hair. That's... That's... look at that. That's... that's intense right there. It's good. It's so dark though. Like, why is his hair completely black? Or is that supposed to be Edgeworth? No, that the, the hair is supposed to be Phoenix. Hmm. No, because... His hair is... I mean, Phoenix's hair is dark, but it's not black. Right? I mean, that one looks like a gray. Hmm. Anyway, my thought was that, uh, that Keanu Reeves would deliver a great Edgeworth, I think. The crime took place in the courtyard, didn't it? When you go from my room to the main hall, you have to take a winding hallway from which you can see the courtyard. Well, that's right. In other words, it was pure coincidence that the witness saw the crime taking place before her eyes. Robin Williams. How about if Robin Williams was still alive? Robin Williams as the judge. There was no complicated setup in this case. Although if, if he was taller, he could be a good gumshoe. But I think he would work well as the judge. Hmm, that certainly seems to be true. There's indeed only one problem with this testimony. If I can clearly point out what it is, then I can begin to quantify just how good this witness's memory and observation skills are. Alright, let us save. We wouldn't want Edgeworth to look silly, right? So we gotta get this right in the first try. So, we know it's this. Pretty sure. Now, what kind of evidence do we have? We have this one. So this would imply that she could have been at Heavenly Hall. It also would like give us the lead-in to stuff. Ryan Reynolds would do well too. For uh for Edgeworth. Mm-hmm. Know who wouldn't necessarily be a good Edgeworth? Harrison Ford. <laughs> Though Oh imagine Clint Eastwood as uh as Von Karma. Like the Grizzle. Although he could, I mean, he could be an Armando almost, but he's, I mean, like he's a bit too old for it and whatnot, but like, I don't know. The Grizzliness. Will Ferrell as Gumshoe. Yeah. I could see that. Have you seen like, Will Ferrell getting old is very interesting to me? Like... It's it's interesting, but yeah, Will Ferrell would make it for a good gumshoe. He um he'd pull off the coat really well, I think. All right, I think it's the note to Iris, but let's double check here. Weather data, not the scroll. Iris's hood she gave away before she left, so there's that. Um. Iris's testimony. Rang lights out at 10 p.m. and was then in her room until the murder was discovered. 
This is also a good one. Breaking news, actors age just like humans. I don't know, man. Disney's trying to convince everyone that they don't. They're not doing a good job of it, but they are certainly... They're certainly trying. What with the de-aging and just AI shopping people's faces onto other people. Madness. Um... Iris's testimony is pretty good, but she's also the accused. So I kind of wonder if that works or not, you know? Like, it's her word against everyone else's, right? So obviously she's gonna say something. But the note to Iris is objective, or more so. So I'm gonna go with the note for Iris first, and if that fails, then I'll use Iris' testimony. I think I need to use her testimony. This evidence clearly reveals the contradiction of that statement, Your Honor. Unfortunately, I'm afraid I can't accept that. <laughs> well done, Your Honor. What? I was only testing you just now. Well, then why don't you try testing this penalty too? Looks like I shouldn't have spoken in haste. That's pretty good. <laughs> I like that like he's still confident about it when he's presenting it. It's not quite like a uh, phoenix where he just kind of goes hee hee, ha, ha. <laughs> All right. No, it's not. It's not her testimony either. Huh. All right. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this isn't the thing to go off of. I was helping an uncle with the training in the temple. That's true. Her back acts up. I helped Iris up the uncle and returned to the house of her temple. It was just for that I finished this with him back. That's when I saw it. I mean, Iris' testimony would also go against this. Because it says that she's in her room. But apparently it doesn't count. Okay. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's this one that I need to go after though, right? Left Iris to help. Just past 10. And confirming that she was in the temple, right? And that she never failed to follow her directions. But we know that, that this is incorrect. So, how do I prove it wrong if it's not those two pieces of evidence? Do you order Pop John's? The reckoning is here of garlic sauce. Or sorry, garlic butter. Oh no, I like Papa John's. I haven't had it in forever because the one that was near me. <laughs> The one that's near me closed, which was sad because they had like just cheap, solid pizza. So the only question I have is what what flavor of Papa John's are you getting? And are you gonna eat the pepperoncino that comes with it, the little little pepper buddy? Lightning, lightning struck. No. Just cheese sticks? Do they have good cheese sticks? I don't know. I don't think I've ever had their cheese sticks. Basically a 10 and 5. That makes sense. I mean, it's just bread with, yeah. That's good. Can you, will you get bacon on them? Can you order bacon on them? Bacon. I, I personally would get bacon on them, but that's because kind of I'm kind of a sucker for bacon. Hmm. Well, we know the outlet. Um, we know the nun didn't do it because lifting up the sword wouldn't work, right? Because of her back. Um. But how would how would she do it? Has the victim's blood and the suspect's fingerprints on it? Receive before the lights out. Objection. Not the hood. I I vote get some tasty cheese sticks and be happy. Huh. Okay. I maybe I'm being led astray here. When I saw it.
from 10 to 11. The body fell. If it fell, how did you see it? No. No. Man. Am I dumb? Like, I know that I'm dumb a lot of the time, but... But I've got to be doing something wrong. The out... She doesn't seem to have any spiritual power. Is that it? That she's of no use in the ceremony? No. Hmm. And I'll kill it with a train in the inner temple. See, she says she left her to help. Am I wrong? Would she... Did she go there? Found in the main hall. This feels like it would be the thing, right? Let me, let me press again. I, I must have missed something. Um, do, 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 do. Spend a night there. Needs nuns. Can't hold anything heavy. Must fainted. Left Iris to help with the training af just after 10 p.m. But that's... that's very wrong. <laughs> right? Rang lights out bell at 10 p.m. Then was in her room until the murder was discovered. And he would say, you met her in the inner temple. Maybe it's the map, actually. To point how, like, far apart they are? No. Oh. No bath in the inner temple. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. There, there is no bath, it's just a bunch of ice. Um... The bath, how long were you in there? We didn't get an answer to that. We get whipped. Crime took place in the courtyard. When you go from my room to the main hall, you have to take a winding hallway from which you can see the courtyard. Do we have a map of that? No, we don't, right? A winding hallway in which you can see the courtyard. Uh, this doesn't help because we can't see the, uh, the railing above. This doesn't help at all. It was pure coincidence that the witness saw the crime taking place before her eyes. There was no complicated setup in this case. Uh, but we know she was bruised too, right? Like she fell from a high place. Like it's not like there. There's obviously complicated setup considering she fell, got bruised, and then like got stuck under the stabbing or whatever. Just after I finish. Just as a heading back when she saw it. I mean, sure. Has her fingerprints on it. Um. Hmm. 
There's snow on the statue, so it's not like it was moved. There's blood on the ground. There's footprints right there, which is interesting. How do I... Has the victim's blood and the suspect's fingerprint on This doesn't help even in the slightest. Pretty sure. It's not Iris's hood, right? Received before the lights out bell. On the night of the crime. Wait, maybe... Actually. No, that doesn't prove anything? That, like, she gave Phoenix that? Maybe Edgeworth doesn't know. There's no bath at the inner temple. That's true, right? Just as heading back is when she saw it. Can we prove that she didn't see it? I mean, that's not true. Well, she was outside too, right? You saw this? No? Okay. I am very lost. Is there... Is there like an obvious thing that I'm missing here? Like... We're talking about her, her memory and observation skills. So maybe I'm not trying to prove her wrong about this. That's when I saw it. She doesn't say what she actually saw either. Right? It's gotta be this, right? Like, how does... How does this not prove it? Like, Phoenix couldn't get it without her being there. And, like, Lights Out was at 10. Which is when she said that she was, you know, doing stuff. So, like, her... She's gotta be wrong, right? But didn't I... I just presented this, right? So it's not this? But this is the only one that makes sense to me. It contradicts the time. Like this one, you mean? Like, I agree that it contradicts the time, but I, I presented it on that one before, right? Or did I mess up and not do that? Iris rang the lights out bell at 10. Yeah, that's what her testimony says. She rang the lights out bell at 10. Right? See, he doesn't accept my my evidence. Present her testimony. I thought I did. Haven't I presented everything on this so far? Okay, I must have been on the wrong thing. Witnesses have to undergo their own trials, I'm afraid. The defendant's fate rests on their powers of observation and memory, after all. <laughs> well, well, don't worry. I'm more than up to the task. Man, her face is like mochi. All of, like the wiggles of her laughing right there. I'm a woman of faith, after all. 
the head honcho of Hazakura Temple. In that case, Miss Honcho, I'd like you to explain something for me. The discrepancy between your testimony and that of the defendant, Iris. She claims that after ringing the lights out bell, she went back and stayed in her room. Which means she did not go to the inner temple at all. N no, she, she said that? <laughs> a defendant or a witness. Who is more likely to lie, do you suppose? The defendant is simply lying to cover her back. But that is completely illogical. The murder was committed in the courtyard of Hazakura Temple. Claiming that she went to the inner temple would make for a much better alibi. But that is odd. Whatever the reason, I can't believe that she would lie. Hmm. She does indeed have honest eyes. Ah! All people lie. That is my belief. Why am I the only one being whipped in? Anyway, neither the witness nor the defendants have any reason to lie. Which means... We must call your memory into question. Dear, dear. You're older than me, yet you want to play that game, do you? Ah, well, that isn't exactly what I, uh... My memory is perfect! Crystal clear, especially in winter. Is it because of the pain sharpening here? And I suppose it's too early to end this Crocs examination, eh? Mr. Edgeworth, if you are going to question the memory of this witness, you will need to show me a more decisive piece of evidence. Understood, Your Honor. I was naive to think that alone would do the trick. Then please add your comment about Iris to the testimony, and let us return to the cross-examination. Honestly, the, the head nun seems like a nice lady. You know? Their font is accents? Wait, did I just miss that? <laughs> it could be on purpose. He could have probably spelled it wrong. Uh, where is it? There you go. Iris came to the inner temple. She was dressed exactly as she had been at dinner. Aha! Here we go. Are you sure that you're not making a mistake? You, young man, need to get your estimation of me up from the floor. Mm. Iris always wears the same clothes. The smallest thing out of place would have stood out like a sore thumb to me. You're making a mistake. Thinking I made a mistake! An excellent finish there, witness. Still, I have to wonder. I wonder if it's spelled, like, or messed up. Is spelled wrong the right, right word to use for an incorrect accent? Probably, right? Because um, the dude isn't very good at French cooking or, like, French stuff in general. <laughs> That's probably the joke. Objection. Witness, let's get one thing straight. The defendant whom you claim to have met, she was wearing this demon warding hood, correct? Of course. That's a very important piece of clothing, I'll have you know. <laughs> Wait a minute. Objection. Hold it right there. Why do you have that? Well, that's the question of the day now, isn't it, Miss Von Karma? I'll have you know that this hood was given to someone as a gift that night. Before the lights out bell was rung. What? You know where I'm going with this, don't you? If the witness had seen the defendant as she claims... And then the iris she saw should have been missing this very hood. <laughs> I like that. Was that the first time we just got a good picture of her on the boxes? It's good. It's not a bad feeling at all, exposing contradictions like this. Now I understand that happy look on Wright's face every time he does it. Order! Order in the court! Where your response is. Sister, this hood. You have spare runs around the temple, don't you? Spares? Well, I do tend to make too many of them. I see. A stockpile. A surplus of hoods, eh? Each nun is only given one hood. 
This should be the only hood that Iris owned. Hmm. This is quite strange. Ah. If there was a surplus of hoods, then she could have worn one of those. There's no contradiction here. Mm. Hmm. I'm sorry to break this to you, Miss Von Karma, but you won't get away that easily. Discrepancies such as this will sow seeds in any human heart. The seeds of doubt. Or the seeds of destruction! Front and rear. Witness? Well, I don't wish to call your testimony into doubt. You must give every detail with precision. I'm certainly becoming John Cottery. I'm not sure I'm comfortable going along with this. Me too. It, it's nice to see, like, the human side of Edgeworth, I, I guess. Not that he's ever really been, like, a bad human or stuff, but he does have, like, a bit of a steely exterior, I feel. Sister, you shall continue with your testimony. Tell us what you saw after finishing your bath. On your way back to the inner temple. Those seeds of doubt are sprouting in the judge's heart. They just need a little more stimulation to bear fruit. I mean, Von Karma is certainly providing stimulation. That whip. Contradictory stimulation. After my bath. Real question though, do you think that she wears a bikini under her outfit? Like I know it's just her name, she chose it for fun and whatnot, but she seems like the type who would. Like she really does. <sighs> I finished my bath around 11 and I thought I should return to the inner temple. Now as I was walking back, I heard a noise from the courtyard. I took a look, and Iris was... Oh, Miss Achilles, and with that sword of all things... How would the sword get out of the hand of the, the thing, though? Miss Achilles was staying in the corner room, which faces out into the courtyard. The stabbing I saw must have occurred after she was pushed out of her window. You saw a truly terrible sight, didn't you? You've met with a terrible fate, haven't you? If I was in your place, then it would be much like Miss Von Karma whipping Mr. Edgeworth in two in court. And me, seeing it all from this very chair! Uh, well, something like that. This judge. His imagination is about as vivid and creative as Detective Gumshoe. I would look the fool if I commented on such foolishness. Anyway, this case is mine, Miles Edgeworth. Calling everyone by their full name. Can't you do something about that habit of yours? I have... I have one acquaintance where uh, people always call, call him by his full name. But he also has, like, his first name is one syllable and his last name is one syllable. So it, like, doesn't sound that weird when people do it, because it's just, like, super quick. And I have at least one, maybe two friends who, uh, who go by their last names and not by their first. But it's true, though. People don't really use, like, full names most of the time. Except when you're like introducing yourself in like a work setting. Okay, let's uh let's get the press in this bikini. How far is it from your room to the inner temple? Hmm. That is a fun fact. I used to get a lot of um a lot of Russian and Eastern European hits on uh one of my websites before. It was a developer blog thing. Let me think a moment. About 20 minutes on these stumps of mine. It's about 15 minutes to Dusky Bridge from Hazakura Temple. The inner temple is just beyond the bridge. Still, you never made it back there that night, did you? 
That, that's right. I was heading along the walkway toward the main hall. Simple tool to hunt down deleted YouTube videos. Oh, that's kind of cool. How does it hunt down deleted YouTube videos? Like when they're deleted, aren't they deleted? Looks up the ideas of a bunch of archives. Oh. Do the, does archive.org and those types of things actually like take a record of the video itself? You say you heard a noise. Thump, just like that. That could only be the sound of the victim falling. It's sometimes same as video, so I didn't know that. It's very quiet in the temple, you know? You can even hear the snow falling from the branches. Thump, just like that. But then, couldn't this noise you heard have been snow falling to the ground? I never thought of that. <laughs> the next one to laugh gets a whipping. Well, we're the source of the sound. I looked over at the courtyard and... I this was... Oh, Mr. Galice. That's sort of all things. This is the second time that the witness has testified to seeing the defendant. But some doubt remains in these claims. Hey, just what does that mean? Just because you're a good-looking young man doesn't give you the right to... The murderer who stabbed the victim with the sword. Sister Bikini, try to recall exactly who it was you saw, as clearly as you can. Hmm. Well, you're a handsome young man, and I'll, so I'll forgive you. No, oh, now that you mention it, there was something awfully strange about her. Something has been bucking me all this time. Please, don't keep us in suspense. Her hood! Her hood? That's right, it's coming back to me. Iris, she wasn't wearing her hood. Huh. I thought something was out of place, but it all makes sense now, doesn't it? After all, she's given that hood away to someone, right? <clears throat> You've dug your own grave, Miles Edgeworth. What if she gave it to Wright and then Pearls got a hold of it? But if Pearls had if Pearls had the hood, she wouldn't be possessed, right? Because it protects against evil spirits. Because originally I was thinking maybe something happened where like Pearl got possessed. Um, is this testimony important? E probably. I mean, her not wearing a hood is... Is, is kind of important. But I don't know if, like... Step death. Photo thing. He's not wearing a hood in that. Um... The weather data doesn't matter. Misty Fade doesn't wear a hood. Actually, Misty Fade doesn't wear a hood. You think Misty Fade did this? It's, uh, it's, 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 it's important. And this may initially appear to put me at a disadvantage. But I can't see any other leads at the moment. Your Honor, I would like these new statements to be added to the testimony. <laughs> Miles Edgeworth. If you want to hang yourself, you need only to ask. I'll gladly lend you my whip. Man, she is mean to her brother, isn't she? Witness, add that statement to your testimony. No problem. You are sure about that? Yes, after all, we always wear the same clothes. I don't mean because we're poor, you understand? It's our style. Yes, that's it. There's absolutely no need to explain yourself. Anyway, she looked different from normal, so that really stuck out. Like me holding a whippet puppy instead of my whip. At least then I might bite you and not someone else. I have not have her hood on. I'm sure of it. Very well. Now, please tell us about the victim, eh? <laughs> okay. Oh, wait. Have I... I haven't pressed her on everything yet, right? The room the victim was staying in overlooked the courtyard, correct? 
Which means the victim's room was on the second floor? No, no. Hazakura Temple is a single-story building. What's up, Yun? Oh wait, did your food arrive? But the moment itself slopes down. The moment? But the mountain itself slopes downward. Hell yeah. Sweet, sweet Papa John's. Which elevates the main gate at the height of the temple in the guest room. How much do you a tip? I mean, how, like 15%, right? Is is a good good amount. I like to, uh, to, to move the decimal over to get 10% and then multiply it by two and then debate with myself if it's, you know, good enough or not. But that's how I generally tip. To about the height of a two-story building. Depending on the service, though. If it's shit service, then, you know. But, I mean, snowy night. I don't know if it's snowing where you are. If it's snowy and, like, the sidewalks are shitty and, like, etc. And they drove there and dealt with all the nasty traffic or conditions and weather and everything else. They should, they should have a good tip. I see. And the victim was staying in one of these elevated rooms, correct? Yes. I should know. I'm the one who carried her things to her room after all. Whoa! Wait a minute. She she carried her things to her room? I don't know about that. Because it's sitting in her back. Hmm. The stabbing I saw must have occurred after she was pushed out of her window. What makes you so sure of all this? It's just like I told you earlier. I heard a noise in the courtyard, okay? Thump! Just like that. <laughs> You're one smart sister, I'll give you that. The autopsy report states that the victim's body was covered in bruises. Indicating a fall from around 10 feet in height. I don't know, maybe she was just like plain twister with pearls and fell a lot. Hmm. It appears that the witness was not mistaken that... Yep, yep, I'm more than just a pretty face, especially in winter. I'm a woman of faith, after all. The head honcho of Hazakura Temple. There's only two of them working there. What's wrong, Miles Edgeworth? No snappy comeback remark. Doesn't feel like she's lying. This is a very powerful testimony, too. She claims to have seen the instant in which the defendant stabbed the victim. And there are only two things I can believe in right now. My client, Iris, and my own abilities as a defense attorney. Okay, I think we've pressed everything now. Alright, finished my bath around 11 and I should return to the inner temple. As I was walking back, I heard a noise from the courtyard. I took a look. Wait, around 11? Around 11. Doesn't that conflict with the coroner's report? Time 10 to 11. Uh, I'm okay. I guess it doesn't because it's the range is 10 to 11. Feels a little close though, honestly. Heard a loud noise. I thought she said that she heard a noise when she was in the bath early in her like previous defense. Took a look and Iris and with that sword of all things. I sent her hood on. Stabbing I saw must have a crash push the window. Now, her not having her hood on kinda makes me think like couldn't have been this lady. But he doesn't really believe in mystic stuff. So I don't think he has an argument to make, because he's he's not quite like right in that regard. So that doesn't surprise me too much, that it doesn't work. I just wanted to check. Um, this doesn't help, does it? No, okay. So it's it's within range. Whoa, no, no, no. That's within range. She finished her bath. With the sword. Stay in the court, we're chasing out of the court, right? Stabbing I saw must have occurred after she was pushed out of her window. I 
I mean, that's true, right? Where's the, um... But could it have, though? Like, how did she get underneath it like that? And with, like, the sword in the hand of this thing? The body fell ten feet after- Wait, 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 wait a minute. The body fell ten feet after death. So that's a contradiction, right? The stabbing I saw must have occurred after she was pushed out of the window. The body fell 10 feet after death. Objection! Here we go. I got it. Impressive logic. That's what I'd like to say anyway. Oh, please do. My brain is something else, especially in winter. However, I think you are overlooking one thing. Miss Von Karma. Would you be so kind as to take another look at the autopsy report? The autopsy report. The victim did fall from a height of 10 feet. However, this fall was after she was killed. Ah! Duh. That's right! It says after death right here! The scene the witness claims to have seen is contradictory. If the defendant stabbed and killed the victim there in the courtyard, how did the victim then go on to take a 10 foot fall? Ugh. We'll get her in our box. Oh god, I just killed my DPI. Okay, here we go. O order! Order! The victim was killed and then fell. If that is the case, then the victim must have been killed in her room. Don't you agree? Currently extremely confused. I'm, I'm a little bit confused too, honestly. Because looking at this picture, it's like... How? Like, it's in the hand. How, how'd this work? Your program isn't picking up changes in environmental variables. Uh, is it the type of program, is it the type of language that doesn't actually uh, like allow reading them afterwards? Or is there a Docker container involved? It's Python. That, that is the logical conclusion. Y yes, that's right. The victim must have been stabbed by the defendant in her own room. And she was then thrown out of the win out her window down to the courtyard below. Were there any signs of a struggle in Miss Duenum's room? She was stabbed with a sword. That would leave a blood stain. Wouldn't you agree? W well, Miss Von Karma, was there any blood? Ah! No traces of blood were found in the victim's room. Your whip has just caused traces of blood to be found on my glorious playoff beard. However, if there was no blood in the room, then you're claimed to- I'm sure there's no need for me to go over this. As I'm sure your honor is well aware of when a stab wound produces the most blood. When it produces the most blood? Very little blood is actually lost the moment of a blade's insertion. If you want to talk about when the most blood would be lost from a body. That would be when the blade is removed. Indeed. With the weapon still in place, it acts like a lid on the wound. Th that's true. With the weapon still in the body, there wouldn't be much bleeding. A perfectly reasonable line of thinking. So, did the statue remove the... the what? We have come to a conclusion, then. The victim was thrown out of the room with the sword still in place. This removes all the contradictions. I must admit that this is a probable version of events. I expect no less from Francisca von Karma. She locates and takes control of every vital point. <laughs> it seems that we need a clear testimony from the witness. Remove all supposition on your part and tell us only the facts, please. W witness, please, remain standing on the crate. Thanks for coming by, Tech Robo. Hope, uh, hope you figure out your environmental variables. I'm sure there's something messing with them. 
I know that some programs, um, like sometimes things modify it, like in JavaScript, the process.env, uh, can't be modified at, at runtime sometimes, depending on various things. So, but it also kind of depends on, um, what like frameworks and other crap they have, because I think some frameworks like purposely go out of their way to screw over and make it so that you can't read the process environments for security reasons. But I don't know if you're using a Docker container or anything like that, make sure you're passing the environmental variables through the container and into the uh, actual application running inside of it. Cause that can be a, an easy thing that goes wrong with those types of things. No. All right. That, that was that was my thought, but good luck. Witness, please remain standing on the crate. D don't go selling me short now. The weight of winter snow has bent me out of shape, especially my back and my mood. Oh. Hey, soul sister, please give us your testimony. I'll give you a vigorous massage once we are finished here. With the whip. Oh boy. All right, all right. When I looked across at the scene, the sword was already in place. Thinking about it now, I didn't actually see her stab me, Mystic Elise. I mean, if Iris was actually there, then maybe she was pulling the sword out of her. I've never seen so much blood before. That's when I fainted. You can't blame me, can you? And when I awoke, Mystic Ami was... was stabbing Mystic Elise through the back. Hmm. Hmm. This all confirms Miss Von Karma's theory. Von Karma strive for nothing but perfection. Putting together such facts is nothing for me. You should know that, Miles Edgeworth. Perfection is an impossibility, Francisco Von Karma. And I'm here to teach you just that. Further details. Alright. Prius. At that time, was the victim bleeding? Well, I was very shocked to be seeing all this, of course, so I'm not entirely sure. But I don't think I saw any blood. Not then. I'm sure that you didn't. The weapon was acting as a plug in the wound. In any case, let's be clear on one very important point. Did you actually see the instant in which the victim was stabbed? This is good that she didn't see her. Think carefully, this is very important. It's Iris we're talking about here. Thinking for all I'm worth. No. When I looked over, the sword was already in Mystic Elise's body. Hmm. It might not be conclusive, but... This testimony supports her theory. The victim was stabbed in a room and then dropped into the courtyard. I think this proves it rather well, Miles Edgeworth. Never seen so much blood before. Didn't you faint? I didn't you just say that you saw no blood? So you're saying that you saw the victim's blood? That's right. So it splattered onto Iris, too. But when the defendant was arrested, she was meditating in her room. And her blood-flecked clothing was neatly folded in the corner. What? Her clothes were blood-flecked as well. Mmm. That seems quite conclusive to me. What should I do? Press this point further? Going back to your previous statement, you said that you saw a little bleeding when the victim was stabbed. But now, you say you saw the victim bleeding? Well, well, I say what, that what I saw is what I saw. What did you see? Maybe I didn't see the poor woman get stabbed. But I saw the girl pull the sword out of her, plain as day. Pulling the sword out. Well, it wasn't exactly pulling. It was more like it came out. Witness, you add the statement to your testimony. Oh, was that important? More important than you can imagine. Hold it. 
smoothly, you say. You were saying you saw the sword smoothly slide out. Th that's right. The whole thing happened right next to the gold statue of Misagami. Misagalise was on the ground and Iris was stooped over her. The sword was buried up to the hilt. There's no way in hell that was smoothly then. When Iris stood out, stood up, the sword in her hand just slid out of Misagalise's body. It slid out from that gaping wound. Ugh. It goes without saying. If the sword was removed, there would be bleeding. Nothing out of place here. Is that really the case? I can't help but feel that something with this testimony is very out of place. That something which couldn't possibly have happened appears to have happened. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, you tell me, you think this thing right here can be smoothly pulled out of someone? Uh-uh. This is like, um, like the barbed arrows so that you can't pull them out or so just like shred more. Objection! Sister Bikini, you are a reliable witness, at least. I'd like to think so. But there are too many contradictions here. What do you mean? You make it sound as though I'm a liar. But, but you're a handsome young man, so I'll forgive you. What contradictions are you talking about? In the scene that the witness claims to have seen, the weapon was thrust up to its hilt into the victim. Furthermore, the killer withdrew the weapon smoothly from the body. However, both of these are complete impossibilities. It's true. There's only blood on the edge. What do you mean? Please explain your- Explain yourself. To start with, do you think it would be possible to stab someone to the hilt with this? No matter how I look at the defendant, she doesn't appear strong enough for that. Doesn't appear. What meaningless dribble. I, too, may appear to be weak and frail. But I can crush men under my heel and make them weep, should I so choose. The objection stands. I worked a little back there, I must admit. That isn't the only issue here. If this sword was truly stabbed into the body up to the hilt, well, just look at all the branches on it. It certainly wouldn't come out smoothly. Th that's... We also have the problem of the amount of bleeding. It's true that when a blade is left in a body, it acts as a plug of sorts. However, when the weapon is shaped like this, it's an entirely different story. The wound would be too large for the blade to completely stop the bleeding. Th that's nothing more than conjecture. In reality, the victim was stabbed with the shishi shichishido. Even a weapon of this nature may still sometimes slide out smoothly, and may still sometimes stop the blood loss. I'm not finished. That's a good face he's making. There is still one more conclusive contradiction. Um, don't make me point that out, please. You've still got more? This one is simple. If this sword really was thrust in all the way to the hilt, why is there only blood on the tip of it? Uh, if this witness is telling the truth, then there should be blood along the entire length of the sword. No! Order! Order! Bra Bravo, Miles Edgeworth. Raising this many contradictions from a single piece of evidence. All the other attorneys I know could maybe manage one, if that. But what does this all mean? Um, jet lag. That is how she didn't expect it. She flew here from Germany, okay? She, she's tired. You can't expect her to be able to hold herself up in court until like tomorrow, when she's no longer jet lagged. And has proven Papa John's and ordered a bunch of it to eat. And then the reckoning comes to the court, you. You have proven contradictions regarding the murder weapon, but 
having come this far, there can be only one answer. And that is... <laughs> the weapon used to kill the victim was not the Shichishido. What? A foolishly foolish idea born from the foolish mind of a foolhardy foolish fool. Let's examine this again. What was it that made us think this sword was the murder weapon? Oh, well... It's because Misakami was holding it. Exactly. However, if you reflect on this, that's the only basis we have to assume such a thing. The impression left by this scene was just too strong. That is what influenced us. It influenced us to believe that Shichishida was the murder weapon. Huh. Order. Order! So maybe the Shichishida was not the murder weapon. Even if that is the case, it changes nothing, Mao Edgeworth. The sister here saw everything. She saw the defendant stab the victim with a sword-like object. Hmm. That's true. Your response, Mr. Edgeworth. She didn't see the moment of the stabbing, though. If that is so, I would like the prosecution to answer the obvious question it raises. The obvious question? Yes. Namely, where did the real murder weapon disappear to? Where indeed? It goes without saying that the police searched the main hall and the surrounding area. Perhaps the prosecution can enlighten us as to if a sword-like object was found. That's... Answer the question, Miss Von Karma. No evidence of that kind was, f was found. Hmm. Another mystery to throw into the pile. A trial without a murder weapon is a tricky beast. I excuse me? Could I say something? I just remember something, actually. What is it, sister? I was just thinking. It's possible... That just maybe what actually happened was, uh, it was just over there. What exactly are you going on about here? The murder weapon, I mean. Maybe. I think I might know where the sword was disposed of. You what? Well then. I think we need to hear testimony from you one more time, sister. Impossible. What else? What else could this old woman have seen? She's seen a lot, I bet. She's seen a lot of shit. I saw the murder at around 11 p.m. And after asking that it, that it be reported, I went out to the main gate. And there, I saw tracks. Tracks that indicated the snowmobile had been used. What if she got ran over by the snowmobile? Or like stabbed in the back by its skis or something. It takes 50 minutes to walk to Dusky Bridge, but less than five using one of those. Maybe they threw the weapon to Eagle River and came back while I was knocked out? Iris could have done that. She can drive a snowmobile after all. She was too afraid to go over there though. Mmm. Quintus, please tell us everything you know right away next time. Well, I'm not in the best of shape. What with my back and my age, you know. Quite. There were indeed snowmobile tracks in front of the main gate. Here's a photograph. Hmm. A snowmobile, eh? I see. Well, it certainly is an interesting theory. Okay, I don't think she could have uh, been speared on this, so never mind about my thought from before. The tracks begin in front of Hazakura Temple and run all the way to Dusky Bridge. Could that have been used by Wright? That solves your pesky little problem, yes. The Eagle River's current is quite swift, meaning that it doesn't freeze over in winter. Making it the perfect place to dispose of the murder weapon. <laughs> Does she really go to the river to dispose of the murder weapon? Mr. Edgeworth, your cross examination, please. Hmm. 
This is an interesting case. Because I have no idea where it's going. Like... Like... Iris... Elise... Larry... <laughs> and Bikini and Pearl Fay. And Maya and me. We're the only people up there, right? I don't know. I, I really hope that Pearl didn't murder someone. <laughs> Saw the murder at around 11 p.m. You are sure about the time? Yes. I was worried about it, after all. Why was that? Because I have a strong sense of responsibility. Especially at this time of year. The outlet was being doused in freezing water at the time. I couldn't very well take it easy in the bath all night now, could I? So at 11, I decided to leave Hazakura Temple. Her estimation of the time seems reliable, at least. Please continue, sister. And after asking that it be reported, I went out to the main gate. You asked Phoenix Wright to report the crime, correct? Right. Right. The one who trampled me. Trampled her? It seems she's the type to hold a grudge. There isn't a phone in the main hall. So I sent him to the bridge. Phoenix Wright. He didn't even have his cell phone on him. He had forgotten it at home, apparently. What a naive boy, as always. Not only do I always carry my phone, but I always have my whip in hand, too. Anyway, I was really scared. It was taking him a while to get back. Hey, Stripe. How's it going? No. No SMC? SMC? Anyways, I was really scared. I was taking a while to get back. Oh, Super Mecha Champions. Gotcha. Uh, not today. Um, Mondays and Wednesdays, I have been playing Ace Attorney for like the past month and a half or two months? Two, two three months? How, how long has it been since I started the trilogy? A while, right? We're on like part... 29, I think, if I'm remembering my YouTube VODs correctly. So, Monday and Wednesdays are Ace Attorney Days currently. And then Fridays are Splatoon 3 for Friend Code Friday. And then Tuesdays and Thursdays are sort of like whatever nights for stuff. Which is why uh, the Mecha Champions has happened on the Tuesday and Thursday last week. My brother apparently grinded the crap out of it this uh, this weekend and got nearly enough gold coins to like buy one of the mechs or something like that. I thought I'd go up by the main gate for a spell. I did not play it this weekend though. I was busy being tormented by uh, by life stories of random people. What? What? Mm. I th Objection! Yin is lying. Oh, you played my brother. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's... That's funny. <laughs> Well, I'm sure he was having a good time, though. <laughs> he also plays, um... He plays games with his girlfriend as well. Like, they play, uh... Dead... Not Dead by Daylight. Um... Or maybe that's what it's called? Dead Dead by Daylight? Or s something involving Daylight. They, they play that together. And Warzone, I think. As I recall, there was a snowmobile outside the main gate when I visited. That's it. That's the only one we have. It'll run no matter how much snow falls. Now, you were certain the snowmobile was there at the main gate when you arrived? Yes, of course. It was parked in front of the gate. So, she had already gone, discarded the murder weapon, and returned by that time. I'm not so sure if this is really relevant. What should I do? Yeah, let's press further. I need answers to every possible doubt. 
The snowmobile in question. Was it still warm at that time? Huh? 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 What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean, eh? What do you mean, Miles Edgeworth? Playing to a slow crowd here. It goes without saying that using a snowmobile will heat its engine. If it was still warm, then it means it was recently used. Ah, <laughs> I see. I never thought of that. Mm, that's right. I overlooked that too. Of course you did. Then answer the question, please, witness. I don't often go around touching hot engines. Hmm. However, now that you mention it, there wasn't any snow on it. Snow? Ah. Yes, for some reason only the snowmobile wasn't covered in snow. I wonder if Butts used it. There wasn't any snow on it? Curses! It seems highly likely that the killer did use the snowmobile then, eh? How long does it take to get to Dusky Bridge by snowmobile? It takes 15 minutes to walk to Dusky Bridge, but less than 5 using one of those. In that case, why didn't you use it yourself? You could have spared yourself some walking. Ah, there's a reason for that. H have we got a moment for me to explain? I think that's why the question was asked in the first place. It was about a month ago. I was driving my beloved little snowmobile, happy as can be. I had fetched some water and was heading back when I went and crashed into a tree. The tree and my back both went crunch, just like that. Crunch. Mmm. Crunch. I haven't been able to find the courage to ride anything since then. Anyway, the killer must have used it. If she crashed it into a tree, does it still work? Hmm? Hmm? Maybe they threw the weapon into Eagle River and came back while I was knocked out. Refresh our memory. How long were you knocked out for? Like I said, somewhere between 10 to 20 minutes. It's possible to get to the bridge and back in 10 minutes using the snowmobile. I had to concede that is more than enough time. Is that all you wish to concede, Miles Edgeworth? While it would have been possible time-wise, one element remains out of place here. Oh? And what would this mysterious element be? The killer's reasoning, your honor? Why did the killer do all this? Why go to the Eagle River to dispose of the murder weapon when there are other methods? Mm, too many unanswered questions. Y your response, Miss Von Karma. Ah! Turning to me for help over the slightest thing. Why don't you think for yourself once in a while? Your honor. What? She says over the top as always. Anyway. <clears throat> Whatever the reason, the fact remains that the defendant could have done this. The murder weapon was disposed of in the river. Another point to me, Miles Edgeworth. Another mystery to feed the fire. Was there any reason to go and throw away with the murder weapon? Luckily, there's surely a problem with this testimony. Now all I have to do is start poking holes in this flawed account. Okay. So let's save. Um, let's see. Sorry. So she saw the murder at around 11. These must be her footprints? Wait, who took this picture? Taken that night. Why was there a photo taken at night? The murder happened at 11, that's true. Snow. Snow and lightning from 10 to 11. Lightning struck Dusky Bridge at 1045. Around 30 minutes passed before the fire starting and going out. The bridge was on fire at this time, by the way. Did she not notice that? I saw tracks. Maybe they threw the river into Eagle. Threw the weapon into Eagle River and came back while I was knocked out. I don't know if the fire is relevant yet. 
But I mean, it also seems kind of weird that it's not mentioned at all. She saw tracks that indicated the snowmobile had been used. I assume that Larry did that. Right? Tonight at 11 at Heavenly Hall. Make sure you come. I kind of think that maybe it's got something to do with this, possibly? Maybe they threw the weapon into you where everyone came back while I was knocked out. And Iris can drive a snowmobile. Could she, though? She said that she was in her room again, but also I don't think that's gonna... That's probably not gonna hold any weight, right? Because she's the defendant again. Um... Maybe it's, maybe it has to do with this, like, Larry, wait a minute, wasn't Larry at the bridge? Larry was at the bridge, right? Is it, no, okay. The only other thing I think to try to tie in Larry would be, um, would be the note. No, okay. Maybe not, maybe not. I went out, after asking that it be reported, I went out to the main gate. Venus Wright went to go do it, right? Snow and lightning. Did she not see the weather? Like, really? I know that th that's not really like a contradiction to anything that she's saying, but it just blows my mind that, like, <laughs> that she's not seeing this, you know? From the main gate to Dusky Bridge. The thing that I've been looking at this entire time is the fact that there's um, these steps across it. Which, wouldn't that... If, if I'm looking at this right, wouldn't that mean that this thing came back and then Phoenix Wright walked across it? Would that contradict anything though? Would that contradict anything? Hmm. Taken by her pupil. And the main gate to Dusky Ridge. I don't know. I... I think it's... She can drive a snowmobile. Is there anything wrong with the snowmobile in the picture? Like, it's there. There is no snow on it, so it was used. But she took this picture, is that right? I saw tracks that indicate that it had been used. And we saw it there too. It's the only one they have. 
And it was there when she arrived. And then we checked to see if it was warm or not. There wasn't any snow in it. And the snowmobile wasn't covered in snow. I'm gonna try to go with this. I don't know how we're gonna work it in, but I feel like this ties us to getting like Larry into the picture. Cause he's lazy, so he would use this. <laughs> I admit this photograph proves something. It proves that the snowmobile was used on the night of the murder. You finally accept the inevitable, it seems, Miles Edgeworth. However, if what the witness says is true, then why is there only one set of tracks? Oh, that's... that's the bit. It was used before it started snowing, and then once on the way back. Right? What do you mean? Iris left Hazakura Temple, threw the weapon into the river, and then returned. If this was the case, then naturally there should be two sets of tracks in the snow. Those from heading out to the bridge, and those from coming back. Uh, you're right. <laughs> you are forgetting one thing, Miles Edgeworth. On the night of the murder, it was snowing. The tracks leading to the bridge were erased by the snowfall. This removes your precious contradiction, not doesn't it? No, because there's no snow on the snowmobile. I see. While she was at the river, snow snopped. What do you mean just the return tracks in the snow? I guess that would also account for it, technically. What do you have to say now, Miles Edgeworth? Is there a flaw in her theory? Yes. This idea that the snowfall covered one set of tracks? Uh, there's a contradiction. The weather report says it snowed the entire time, right? The tracks to the river were covered by snow. What a nice theory. However, Miss Von Karma, that is impossible. Do you care to explain why there's a rude index finger currently pointed in my general direction? No need. The evidence will do all the talking for me. On the night of the murder, the killer went to and returned from Dusky Bridge. In order to dispose of the murder weapon, the alcohol and tracks were raised by snow. Or so claims Miss Von Karma. Mr. Edgeworth, present your evidence to the contrary, eh? Evidence that the alcohol and tracks were not covered by snow. Pretty sure it's this, right? Snow, 7 to approximately 10.50. Lightning, 10 to approximately 11 p.m. I think it's this. Although, actually, that... That... Does that line up to her thi No, fuck it, I'm going with it. It's, it's the only weather data we have. Witness, please tell us again what time it was when you witnessed the crime. Like I said, it was around 11. Of course. This means that the weapon was thrown away after that time. Correct. On that note, please take a look at this data. It is the weather report for Eagle Mountain on the night of the murder. The weather report. Snow started to fall at 7 p.m., but it stopped at around 10.50. Therefore, when the sister witnessed the crime at 11 p.m., the snow had already stopped falling. It's impossible for any tracks made out at that time to have been covered up. Ah. Order! Order! Oh, he didn't get whipped that time. 
Very well then. It looks like Miss Von Karma's claim has been snowed in. <laughs> it's covering his nose. It's great. Oh, that's good. It's too soon to be closing this trial due to snow. Snow day, snow day, snow day. Miles Edgeworth, how pathetic of you to rely on the weather of all things. Answer me this then. When is a weather report ever correct? Ah, uh, no, 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 you've got it all wrong. This isn't a forecast. This, uh, is actual data. Ah! Forecast, data, all weather reports have some inaccuracies. It may have still been snowing in the vicinity well past 11 p.m. That's true, we cannot be totally sure, eh? What? How did she pull that off? It had stopped snowing at Hazakuro Temple when the murder took place. You need to provide conclusive evidence of this. Come this far. There's no turning back now. Very well. I too cannot allow any doubt to remain concerning this testimony. You can't back down, can you? Such a perfectionist, smiles Edgeworth. I... God. Sorry, my, my brain just did a deep dive into the gutter for a moment. Sorry, the, 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 the prosecutor and the defense attorney. I was just like, for a moment, my brain was just like, what is her bedroom talk like? <laughs> like... <laughs> anyway, that's, that's all. That just came to mind for some reason. <laughs> anyway. Very well then, Mr. Edgeworth. Where is your evidence that it already stopped snowing when the victim was killed? <laughs> oh no. My cooking emote. <laughs> it, it has a new meaning now. Where's my pictures? I'm pretty sure I know what it is. The, um... Here we go. I think it's this, right? There's no snow here. Right? There's snow on the statue, but there's snow on the body, so it didn't snow at all. Ultimately, it all comes down to one point. That being, whether or not it was snowing in that courtyard when the victim was stabbed. That's right. But proving that is incredibly easy. Like you, Von Karma. If we want to know whether it was snowing or not, this photo would tell us everything. Of course, I am referring to the photo of the crime scene. As you can see, everything is covered with snow. With just one exception. And that is... The victim herself, Miss Elise Duenum. Why is there no snow on top of her? The answer is simple. It had stopped snowing when she was killed. That's why. Mm. In other words... If the killer really did go to the Eagle River to dispose of the murder weapon, then in this photograph, there should be two sets of tracks. Ah. Order, order, just what are you, just what are you suggesting, Mouse Edgeworth? To be honest, I'm not entirely sure myself, but this is simply what all the facts point to. That night, 
Someone used a snowmobile to leave Hazakuro Temple. From the tracks left, it could be understood that they were heading for Dusky Bridge. At that time, it was still snowing. Of course it was, because those tracks were erased by the snow. Then, when this person returned to Hazakuro Temple, the snow had stopped. Thus, the return tracks remain. Hmm. Can I say something? This all sounds a bit fishy to me. What does, sister? There is only one key for the snowmobile. Hmm. Furthermore, on the night in question, we know that the defendant had it. The key was found in her room after the murder. Which can only mean that night Iris used the snowmobile to go to the inner temple. No, she used it to go to the heavenly thing to meet up with butts. Probably. Most likely. Probably. Iris said that she never went there. I should probably press on this point some more when I get the chance. The snowmobile can't cross the suspension bridge. So, she must have left it on the Hazakura side of the bridge and crossed on foot. That sounds right. But what's odd is, when I left Iris and returned to Hazakura Temple, I didn't see anything near Dusky Bridge. Y you must have just failed to see it, sister. Maybe. But when I made it back to Hazakura Temple, it was there, by the main gate. The, the snowmobile, I mean. I know what I saw, it was covered in snow, too. But, but that isn't possible. Hmm. This is very tricky. Order, order, order in the court. What does this all mean? Uh. So then what was the snowmobile used for? It wasn't taken by the defendant when she went to the inner temple. If it had been, then the witness couldn't possibly have seen it by the gate. Furthermore, it wasn't used by the killer to dispose of the murder weapon. If that was the case, there should be two sets of tracks in this photo. All we know is this. After it stopped snowing, someone used the snowmobile to return to Hazakura Temple. Mmm. Never thought a simple snowmobile would cause so much trouble. I think we've learned all we can from this witness. Yes. Yes, I have nothing more to add. I've told you everything. Everything that I know. But then, that still leaves us with the same problem. If only there was someone, a witness who could testify to have seen the snowmobile. A witness, huh? Was there no one out walking perhaps near Dusky Bridge on that night? I don't think that's likely. It was cold enough to freeze your ears off. Only an idiot would go out wandering like that. Hmm? Hmm? Mm hmm? Mm hmm? Unless they had something really important to do. Hmm. That's a shame. Hold on. Something is coming to me. An idiot may well have gone wandering out on the subarctic night. Your Honor. Actually, there just might be one individual who may have... Who may be of help to us. Really? You know of someone who might have seen the snowmobile on the night of the murder. I don't know for sure if he saw it or not. But there are two things about him that do come to mind. Which, which are? First, that he saw something incredible on the night of the murder. And the second being... This individual that I am thinking of went wandering outside on that cold night. In other words, he is our kind of idiot. Mr. Edgeworth! Who is this idiot you're talking about? Venus Wright! I wonder if you get like... Do you, do you think you'd get an achievement if you presented Phoenix Wright there? This guy must be a product of Jean-Luc de... Jean-Luc de la Duke's guy to obnoxious French painting. Do it. Alright, hey, hold on. Let me save here so we can pick up right there after. 
then go here. And then we need to skip across all this. Also, come on, let, let me, let me. Man, this was a long bit of, uh, bit of everything, huh? Uh, it, it's, it's been a little while since I saved, huh? Okay, here we go, here we go. Ready? Let's see what happens if we present Phoenix right. <laughs> Just what is the meaning of this, Mr. Edgeworth? Are you saying that this is the person who was near Dusky Bridge that night? Uh, I did think so, however- ugh! You're the wandering idiot, Miles Edgeworth. Cool off before you try to take me on again. Ah, uh, alright. I was hoping that it'd be like, something specific. To, uh, to Phoenix. That's too bad. This guy must be a product of Jean de Luc. Jean Luc de Luc. Jean Luc de la Duc's guide to obnoxious French painting. That's hard to say. This is Larry Butts, a disciple of the victim, at least doing them. Her student? Interesting. And why was he wandering a boot upside on the night of the murder? Th that's. I could tell him about her designs for Iris, but it may cost us his credibility as a witness before I even call him. He is, after all, an artist. He was perhaps searching for something in the snowy scenery that would move him. Although I cannot guarantee that this is the reason. Nice half-truth. And so, this unfortunate, unreliable looking man, what exactly was it that he saw? I intend to extract that from him right here in this courtroom. Summon this youth as a witness, immediately! I have no choice, do I? I believe he is in the gallery for this trial. It will not take long to summon him. Very well, Larry. You may have escaped me yesterday, but today I'm going to get everything out of you. Out? The court will now adjourn for a 20 minute break. This one karma. Please see to preparing the next witness. Understood, your honor. Good. Well then, court is now in recess. To be continued. Now, uh, about the cooking. I got curious, right, about uh, about what sort of things people might uh, might write. So I have uh, I've I've opened something awful. Not the websites of the awful. I, I mean something like this is a noun, which is uh, as you can see, fanfiction.net. Do you know? That there's an entire section for uh, for Francisca and like Miles Edgeworth. <laughs> did did you know that? Because I didn't until I just googled this. Written for the kink meme. Where's where are the platonics one? Because it says there's some platonic ones. Rated T to be on the safe side. Miles Edgeworth is perfect, but when she discovers his new teenage sidekick, an unfamiliar emotion takes over. But like, you know how she says like foolishly foolish fool and those kind of things? That's what I'm imagining like that someone has written her like bedside ram, bedside manner. Phoenix accidentally gets Maya pregnant. How will they cope with becoming parents? New epilogue. <laughs> wow. Rated K plus. What is K plus? Is that like kids plus? I, I want to find her like alliterating. Hmm. There, there's kissing, I see. 
but I don't see any uh any nonsense. Damn. Melting the ice. That's a good name for it. I'm gonna have to like look through some of these to try to find if there's any good stuff here. Because this is mildly disappointing that uh that I don't see any like silly wordage, you know? But also, yeah, if you've never had the misfortune of finding yourself on like fanfiction.net, that could be like a stream all of it all of on its own, honestly, of just like reading bad fanfictions. We'd have to like narrow them down to teen. I imagine you can't just like read pure smut on Twitch. Uh, should we stop here for now? We're at two hours. We hit a to be continued section. So it, it might be best to stop here for the night. Um, it looks like... Uh, okay. Uh, I think it looks like, according to uh, this, this Steam guide, that we are right here. We, we just arrived at part three, which means that we've got, um, you know, two more parts to go. So we might be able to do both of those on Wednesday, perhaps, and, and finish off the, uh, finish off the thing. Assuming that I don't get horribly stuck like I did on, uh, the very first question, but that's good. I'm really looking forward to finding out if, um, like this is going to get extended to another day or not though. Like, is Edgeworth actually going to continue this entire thing from start to finish without Phoenix showing up? Because I was kind of expecting, like, right to finish it off. You know, so it'd be like teamwork between the two of them. But it also kind of feels like Edgeworth is just going to get all of this done on his own. Which he totally could, I bet. But, man, I'm still bummed that I didn't see any, uh... Any good dialogue from uh, Francisco? Sad. I'll just I'll just have to write write it myself, I guess. <laughs> Some of these are really short. Sorry, I'm now like glancing at these like random fan fiction things. What? Wow. Interesting. Sorry, I, I, I just read one called Imperfect Love, which uh, has her, like, suiciding at the end. Yet this is rated T for teen. That's weird. Okay. I like the name Imperfect Love. Didn't think it was going to go into, like, Insanity Land. Gummy. <laughs> Sorry. There's someone who's come up with uh with pet names for gumshoe. Gummy. Nope. Alright, I'm gonna stop <laughs> I'm gonna stop looking at this now. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really sure what to say either, Iris. I don't know how I got down this hole. Just a random neuron in my brain asked, what would Francisca say in bed? And that's that's how I got here. Do, 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 do. All right. Anyway, let, let's stop here. I'll I'll continue this on Wednesday. So, any oodles? Uh, Wednesday we'll pick this up again. Um, tomorrow, I don't know. Um, we we have been like last week we played Super Mecha Champions both days. So I haven't gotten back to Eldest Souls yet, and I kind of want to. Um, I haven't talked to, you know, my brother or, or or you, Yen, to see if anyone wanted to play 
super mecha champions again. Though I could play that too, honestly. It is it is fun to play. So we could we could see. See if I can wrangle up someone. The um I would say that like we could play it as like a oh, like play and then maybe strike gamer or other people who came by before could join in, but the last time that someone came in and gave me their ID, I couldn't find them with the uh, friend search. So I'm not too keen on that because if the search thing doesn't work, then like, how are you supposed to actually play with people? Um, so I don't know yet. I'll figure it out before I actually go live tomorrow, obviously, but um, no promises because I, I do want to try out Elder Souls again and maybe after taking a week off, or so, uh, maybe I'll have that like beginner's luck again on some of these bosses. We'll see. Anyway, I hope you all have a good rest of your night, rest of your day. I, I appreciate you all hanging out with me while uh, we go through this. Like I said, it was uh, it was a heck of a Monday. So, yeah. Blue Archive Fire Drill is live. What, um fire drill do I, do I have that unlocked joint firepower exercise blue archive wiki on global oh this is a raid the joint firepower exercise is a bi-weekly event really Oh, is that the one that like bothers you to be like, try again using specific people kind of thing. Like you have to use a special strategy to do this thing. Cause I'm pretty sure I've never done one of those or like I attempted it and I just failed miserably. So then I was like, uh, I'm good. I just spent all my AP on the event quest. Cause I'm level 50. Yeah, level, I think level 50. And so I have up to level, or quest nine, I think. I think I can't beat nine, but I can beat eight, or it's, it's something like that. So I just push all the stuff into it and then go spin the little lottery thing to collect the uh, swimsuit Ayane uh, coins, or not coins, but the, the purple stuff, which, which works okay. Oh, hmm. I just realized that this entire time I've had playing with viewers on for a tag. Where, I mean, you can't really play this game with viewers. I mean, you kind of do anyway, just because we're all kind of trying to figure this out together. But... Yeah. Yeah, true. True. Why did I... <laughs> oh no. Keep... There we go. Uh, perfect. Well, have a good rest of your night, everyone. Don't let this haunt your dreams. Bye for now. Wee. It's still playing the good music. <laughs> Exit game. Bye.